Greetings, bookworms, and welcome to the Bearded Book Club's production of Sky's End by Mark Gregson. If you want to follow along in this and all of our productions, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so you will be notified of all new videos as well as when we do our live shows. If you would like to support Bearded Book Club, you could do so in two ways, both of which are listed in this video's description. Number one, you could become a member of the YouTube channel and or become a patron and support us on a regular basis. Or number two, you can go to our Amazon wish list and send us a book as a one-time donation. So without further ado, let us continue. Chapter 32 Pound enters the kitchen before sunrise, as is custom for the cook, but I was up before him cleaning, because our swabby sleeps in the brig. Pound stops, watching as I scrub spills from the table. Don't you ever sleep, Irwin? Only after I visited your mother. For an instant, his brow furrows, then he starts laughing. I smile and plunge the rag into the bucket while he heats the crystal stove. We work in silence. Once I'm done, I approach him. We need to talk. He splashes purple hot sauce on the giant pile of crispy rice and listens as I tell him my plan to defang Sebastian. Oh, he wouldn't like that, Pound says, smirking as he lowers the sauce bottle. But why trust me with this? Why not Roderick? I don't think Roderick hates Sebastian like you do. True, Pound chuckles. I hate Sebastian more than I hate you, and I hate you like I hate lemon juice and paper cuts. Exactly why you're perfect for this. He rubs his chin. Irwin and Atwood working together to remove a snake. He looks up, considering, until the stench of smoke carries to him. He yowls and pushes the pan of burning eggs from the heat. You're distracting me, Elise. Sorry. So are you in? He rests his huge hands on his hips. Finally, he nods. Yes, I've always wanted to give that turd eater a taste of his own treachery. I grin. Good. Now make me breakfast, cook. Eat spit. Get out of my cafeteria. But as I leave, he's smiling too. After Pound escorts Sebastian to the lavatory above, I search Sebastian's cell. Behind the toilet, inside the sink's pipe, and I even stamp around the floor searching for hollow places. Sebastian wasn't lying when he claimed he'd clogged the toilet. Scraps of fabric from his bed float in the bowl, the bird fart. I finger around the cot's legs, something hard at the back of one. Strapped down, my brow furrows. Long-range comm gem, illegal in the gauntlet. Who the hell has he been contacting? It's not exactly what I've been looking for. Still, I stuff it into my jacket, then stand in place wondering where to look next. I don't have much time before the return. My eyes fall on the mattress, and I follow the stitches in the fabric. Near the top, my fingers discover a loose flap cut into the foam. My hand dives inside. Ouch! I yank my hand back, blood balls near my fingernail. After licking it off, I gently reinsert my hand. And soon, even with the stinging pain, I start smiling because I catch what I've been looking for. A small blade. Between the knife's crossbar shines an emblem of two vines twisting over a rock. The family emblem of Abel. I've seen it on Sebastian's luggage. A series of steps boom on the stairs. Muffled voices follow. I push the mattress back, stuff the knife into my jacket, and duck into the shadows of the crates. Pound and Sebastian's silhouettes come toward the brig. Thanks, old chap, Sebastian says. I've been holding that one for days. Feel seven pounds lighter. If someone else saw it, they would have claimed it was yours. Pound growls. So I'm curious, Sebastian says, why do you follow Conrad? If I'm not mistaken, didn't his great-grandfather cheat and kill yours in a duel? Be quiet. What would your family think knowing you've betrayed them, cooking in Irwin's meals like a servant, but I suppose they couldn't be more disappointed in you than they already are? They step outside the cell. Get in, Pound says. I don't think... Pound lifts Sebastian by his trousers, wedging them up Sebastian's crack, and hurls him into the brig. Sebastian smacks the ground. He whirls around just as Pound slams the door. Physical violence is not the hunter way. Right, Pound says, striding off. You go tell someone. See if anyone believes your forked tongue. Sebastian wipes his pants, and I'm pleased to see he has a rather sour look on his face but it'll only get worse for him. Much worse. The snake's out. 
The whole crew assembles in my cabin, including Sebastian. He stands between us, finding everyone staring at him with their arms folded. He smiles and raises his hands out in supplication. Friends, I've had a change of heart. I will support your captain. What must I do to regain your trust? When no one answers, he turns to Eldon. Come now, Eldon, Sebastian says, opening his arms. I've missed you. Don't talk to him, I snarl. Sebastian frowns and turns to me. I thought you were a Democrat, Captain. Giving me orders that I can't have friends? He looks at Bryce. What about you? Care to give me a hug? No. Are you sure? I bet Conrad would like to know that... Enough, Sebastian, I say. We all know what you are. And what is that? A swabby. Then everyone kicks off their boots and tosses them at his feet. Now swab, I say, or face the brig again. Sebastian glowers and gives me a lethal look. I toss him a can of polish and a rag. Slowly, slowly he lowers onto the floor and as we watch, starts scrubbing. Make sure to get around the ringlets, Keaton says. They can be tricky. I'm sure he knows how to do it, Roderick says. I'm just trying to help. He looks like he needs it. The room laughs. Sebastian's red and shaking. This is the most degrading thing we could do to him, and for once a silly smile doesn't mark his face. If there's one thing Sebastian hates, it's being treated like a low. When he finishes polishing the shoes, Roderick lifts a full bag. Have fun, Roderick says, spilling the boots over Sebastian's disgusted face. They tumble over Sebastian's legs and thud against the floor. They tumble over Sebastian's legs and thud against the floor. You might want to clog your nose when you get to Pounds. He's got sweaty feet. I never wear socks, Pound says. Keaton chuckles. Once Sebastian starts on those, the crew leaves me alone with him. I watch him from my desk. He glowers at me between the gaps of his dark bangs. Found your comm gem, I say. He acts surprised. Comm gem? Who have you been contacting? He gives me a coy look. One might wonder what's going on in the islands right now. I mean, here we are, isolated from everything. You might think that there is news we would want to know. News you would want to know in particular. What are you talking about? He grins, seeming excited to know something I don't. It makes me want to punch him bloody. You'll hear about it soon, I'm sure. Big deal, Conrad. Big, big deal. Can't stand this little turd eater. The room goes cold as I stare at him. I'm better at this than you are, Sebastian. What, polishing shoes? I come to stand over him, rising. It's in my blood. My ancestors dueled their way to the crown of the mountain, and they've kept it for generations. He snorts. As long as highs are full of that legacy. Wait, all of all you lifelong highs are full of that legacy nonsense. You think you're stronger than I am because you're willing to go to lengths I would not. My tongue becomes dangerous, but you underestimate what I'd do to be rid of you. He scoffs. What are you going to do, kill me? I don't answer. The room becomes cold, his eyes narrow as he looks over how much bigger I am, how much stronger, and if I attack him, he can't trick me like he tricks Samantha. So, he says, I can turn you into a murderer after all. You were right about me, Sebastian. We are a lot alike. He watches my hand slip into my jacket. When I pull out his knife, it glints under the light. My reflection mirrors on its glittery surface. He stares at me looking for a tell, but I'm not bluffing, and when he realizes that, he glances at the door, fingers twitching, ready to run for a pathetic little lotcher. I'm no murderer, Sebastian. I turn the blade's point toward my torso, but that doesn't mean I can't turn you into one. Sebastian's eyes widen. When he realizes what I'm about to do, he leaps for me. No, Conrad, don't! I stuff the knife into my shoulder. It sinks deep into my flesh, stinging like wet fire. My teeth gnash and I shout, Sebastian, put the knife down! No! Sebastian's yelling, blood on his hands as he tries to stop me. By the time he rips the knife free of my shoulder, the door bursts open and Pound charges forward like an enraged prowler. Murderer! No, I... He tackles Sebastian to the ground. Sebastian wheezes, tries to speak, but Pound throws two ham-sized fists into his face. Conrad stabbed him. Pound throws another one, and that one clocks him out cold. The knife slides to the doorway. I topple to the ground, gasping, holding my shoulder, trying to stop the spilling red. 
Pound crouches over me. You okay, Elise? Hurts like hell. You're crazier than I am. Soon, Roderick, Keaton, and Bryce rush into the room. What? Oh. They crowd me. Bryce panics as she applies pressure against my wound, trying to stop the gushing blood. Roderick doesn't know what to do other than nervously pat my leg. You'll be okay, he says. You'll be... Roderick, get a towel, Bryce orders. Roderick, his face pale, rushes down the hallway. Bryce looks into my eyes and there's fear in hers. I'm a bastard for causing her and the others pain, but this is the only way. Sebastian's a crab that'll never... that'll snatch everything trying to rise. He'll drag us to the bottom of the bucket. Roderick returns with a bundle of towels. Bryce wraps one over my shoulder, but it's not long enough until... But it's not long until the fabric seeps red. I feel weak. My skin pales. He hit an artery, Bryce says. We need meds now. Keaton dashes from the room. I sink deeper down the wall, wincing as the pain throbs. No one has ever claimed that sucking venom from a snake bite will feel good. Getting Sebastian off my ship, though, sure will. I didn't have enough evidence when Sebastian tried to kill me, but this time I have the weapon and a witness who found Sebastian on me with blood on his hands. Resting in the medical bed and with my shoulder in a sling, I contact the spy ship and explain to Travis of Waters our situation. He connects my gem to the long range, allowing me to speak with Master Coco. Then Pound and I recount what happened, and as we do, Master Coco goes silent. Sebastian of Abel, she says finally, my assistant's nephew. Yes, he attacked you, but he's always been so... kind. Sebastian has a way of putting a veil over people's eyes, even brilliant people like Master Coco. My crew doesn't feel comfortable with him aboard, I say. Honestly, I don't feel comfortable. We want him off. She takes a breath. Off the ship? No, I think not. What? You have a brig. He tried to murder me. This is the gauntlet, Conrad. Someday you'll have a crew and you'll be hunting... Accidents on the farthest skies, and there won't be a spy ship there to collect someone from your brig. This is a good learning opportunity. But master, keep him in the brig. I'll decide what to do with him after the gauntlet. I scowl. It seems the venom will linger a little while longer, but at least now it'll be restricted to one part of the ship, and I'll never have to see it. Fine. He'll stay aboard, but I'll make sure he'll rot. And even though he's still aboard, I smile. Smile because with Sebastian out of the way, I can focus entirely on winning this thing.